turn with me to Dr. Luke, the 17th chapter, starting in verse 1. When you have it, please say amen. amen. One day Jesus said to his disciples, there will always be temptation to sin. But what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? It would be better to be thrown into the sea with a milestone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So watch yourselves. If another, if, if, if another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. The way Christ put emphasis, you must, that means that is non-negotiable. The king, not me, Jesus, has spoken. If Mike sinned against me 70 times 70 in one day, I have an obligation to the king if I'm going to be in his kingdom to do what he told me to do, and that is to forgive him. Now, we would tell ourselves, though, I can't keep letting nobody misuse me. I can't let nobody mishandle me. That's true. It's balanced with this statement right here. So don't take it as face value and let somebody just mishandle you. It's not what I'm saying. But you and I, I and you, have an obligation to the scriptures. I'm going to read that one more time. And you're hearing, even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns and asks forgiveness, you must. Why are you playing with me, man? Why are you playing with me, girl? This is the seventh time you didn't ask me to forgive you for something. And each time is something different. Why you keep talking about forgive you and you coming back doing something else? See, this is how our fleshly carnal mind think. And so we talk ourselves out of giving people what the word of God says we must do. So Father, thank you. Teach. Teach, teach, teach. Help the body. Thank you for this word. We receive it. Start it with me first. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. How many of y'all are familiar with John Bevere? I thank God for the men of God. Sitting on yesterday, studying, and the Spirit of God dropped in my spirit as I began to seek God for a pulse like I always do. My God, he began to show me how the enemy is trying uh, to attack from within. So I want to cut his head off. One of the most deceptive and insidious kinds of bait is something every Christian has encountered. It's called offense. Actually, offense itself is not deadly if it stays in the trap. And I quote John Bevere on that. An offense is not deadly if it stays in the trap. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. But if we pick it up and consume it and feed on it in our minds, then we have become offended. Offended people produce fruit. See, we always talk about good fruit, God fruit, spiritual fruit. But a such thing is producing fleshly fruit. Ooh, I love how my young teenagers is paying attention to me. Thank you, Lord. Free my babies in the name of Jesus. And so, therefore, when we begin to pick up and feed an offense, it began to produce the opposite of good fruit. It began to produce some bad fruit. Are y'all with me so far? Like hurt, anger. Uh, that was brought up in the man's meeting on Monday. My God, how I'm dealing with an angry spirit. Mm. Oh, my God. Uh, and I told him, well, go do 20 push-ups when you find yourself getting angry instead of knocking a hole in the wall or cussing somebody out. Yeah, that's a good way. So you got to remove a negative with a positive. Good teaching. 
So my God, some of the fruit is anger, outrage, jealousy, resentment, strife, bitterness, hatred, and even envy. If you're dealing with that, my God, uh, you're producing some bad fruit. Let me say that again. How about anger, outrage, jealousy, resentment, strife, bitterness, and hatred, and even envy. Some of the consequences of picking up an offense are also consequences, insults, attacks. You wound people. It causes division. It causes separation. My God, it breaks up relationships. My God, also from picking up an offense, my God, betrayal takes place. And then also the ultimate goal of the enemy is to make every last one of us backslide and quit on God. And there has been thousands of people all around the world, my God, that profess to be Christians. And some are Christians, my God, that they are, that ended up in a backslidden condition because they refused, my God, to trade in their sorrows for God's glory. Right. They refused, my God, to release, my God. Can I help you understand something, my God? As I taught you, son, they don't mock your life. Or don't let your attitude mock your life. But don't, my God, if we come down here week after week after week and God moves inside of 205 South Shirley, but every time we come down here, my God, and we're not releasing what needs to be released, you are mocking yourself. That's it. Can I help you understand something? Sin. Who, my God? Sin. Always mocks a believer. Sin, always, not sometimes, Lisa, always mocks. Sooner or later, scripture, sins trail behind you, but sooner or later, they catch up and bring judgment. Sooner or later, sin will judge. Sin will mock, and sin will find you out. We can never understand, write this, we will never learn our true condition. Pride always hides our true condition. Let me say it like that. Pride always hides our true condition. We tell ourselves ain't nothing wrong with us when it really is. I'm good. I got this. It's somebody else's fault. They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have said that. The devil is a lie. Pride always hides your true condition. Are you with me so far? This, this a word right here, offense, my God, I've been offended, my God, has shipwrecked thousands on top of thousands of people around the world. And there's some sitting up here right now, my God, we have to check, we, I didn't say y'all, have to check ourselves and make sure we're not dealing with the spirit of hatred, strife, jealousy. See, all that stuff come from being offended. Mm, Jesus said it's impossible to live this life and not have the opportunity to be offended. We all have an opportunity to be offended, but my God, it's the choice that we have to make to choose not to be offended or we choose to be offended. It's no longer on the person, it's on you. Because if you wrong me, Vontaze, I have a choice to make. The Bible says I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. So when I choose to accept an offense, when I choose to be, keyword, choose, watch me now, to be offended, I have just chosen death over life. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Mm. Uh, you don't get to tell God, I didn't know. She wronged you. What did you do with it? A person cannot fully, and I know they watch it, you would never be able to fully maximize and operate in your assignment and reach your destiny when you're offended. Make it plain, sir. And the enemy used this great attack to derail and kill many purposes, yeah. purpose in life. He does. Derail and kill. Yes, 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 your purpose is your purpose, but if you never fully, my God, maximize or reach your potential and serve your purpose to the world, you might as well say it was killed because you didn't do what God created you to do. That's why Paul said, my time is up. I have kept the faith. I've finished the course. It's a crown laid up for me. I ain't got nothing else to do. I have done everything Apostle Paul said that God created me to do. I have done it. It's time to go. Jesus said on Calvary, it is finished. Come on, somebody. My God, when you and I return back to God, as the late Dr. Miles Rose say, my God, fool, uh, we did not finish our assignment. You are supposed to go back to God empty. And I want you to understand something, my God, being offended and accepting an offense is killing us from the inside out. The Spirit of God spoke it to me when I was working out, so I posted it. Some of you that's friends with me on Facebook might have seen that. But my God, this thing that I'm talking about right here, my God, is an inside 
attack of the enemy. Even though it is formulated external, but it affects you and I internal. The enemy uses something external to destroy you and I internal. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is with Amen. Jesus said first clean up the Amen. So the enemy used an external situation to destroy you and I internal. There's so many people's, my God, oh my God, so much has, has happened to people where they have given up, my God. They have walked away from jobs before they were supposed to. They have walked away from relationships before they were supposed to. They have disconnected from people even before they were supposed to because of an offense. That's right. wow. People that God has brought in your life to bless you, enhance you, to develop you, help you. Come on, somebody. You and I, I and you have walked away from because they, we let them offend us. Right. Notice I said we let them because we have a choice. And if we understand, thank you, daughter. And if we understand, my God, like what Minister Tory always said, y'all heard me say this before. When you first meet somebody, my God, you first meet them for the first time. Hi, my name is Lawrence Peoples and your name is? Vontez. And my God, and so now I need to give you a pass because I know sooner or later, somewhere, my God, you're going to do something that I may not like. I may do something you might like. I need to already give you a pass. See, that's wisdom. Understand, my God, oh my God, things will happen. People will make mistakes, my God. Oh, that's why the Bible says the second greatest commandment, Christians, is to love thy neighbors as thyself. Why is it that we can forgive people, but we can't even forgive our loved ones? Why can't we forgive our neighbor, our Christian brother and sister, but we won't forgive our wives and husbands and children? I can't, you know, man. Some of the hardest pain. And toughest pain is when someone is closest to an offender. Right. But again, we have to accept it and then feed it. Yeah. No matter even though they've done it, we still got to accept it and feed it. Yeah. So point number one, let's look at this betrayal. Psalms 55, 12 through 14. Write that down. down Psalms 55, 12 through 14. If, if an enemy, David says, were insulting me, I couldn't do it. If a foe were rising against me, I could hide. But it is you, a man like myself, my companion, my close friend, with whom I once enjoyed sweet fellowship at the house of God as we walked about among the worshipers. So now this offense has happened amongst brothers and sisters that once enjoyed sweet fellowship in the house of the Lord. Now they no longer, oh my God, go to the house of the Lord together. Is that familiar? Come on, y'all gotta talk to me tonight. Is that familiar? We started out in sweet fellowship. We started out excited. I used to pick you up for church. You used to pick me up for church. When I come, I go, hey, pastor, I hate you, you, I hate whatever. And you said, now we don't even speak to each other. We once enjoyed sweet fellowship. Don't you? I'm trying to get us to see. Don't you see how the enemy will come in to a situation, my God, like the body of Christ, and he starts methodically turning it down from the inside out. Are you listening to me? We once enjoyed sweet fellowship together. We walked to the house of the Lord together. We, we communed together. We ate together. We supped together. We, pri we cried together. We prayed together. We had all this going on, my God, but now we don't even talk to each other no more. Christians. Because we have accepted an offense. Mm. This is David. King David at that. He said, I can endure this if it was somebody else. Way back, don't you know, the closer the person is to you, the more painful it is. If it's Bryce sitting way into the back, it don't hurt as much, my God. But when it's up close right there, come on, somebody. Oh, my God, it hurts you a little bit more. Uh, this psalmist, my God, in your teaching, my God, this was not nobody that David was talking about, my God, that he seen periodically, that he had some type of fellowship with. This is somebody that he walked with in agreement, that he spent time with. Like I told you, he laughed with, cried with, prayed with. Come on, somebody. Now we ain't got nothing going. That's painful. Are you with me so far? And the word of God says, and then many will be offended, Jesus said. They will betray one another. And they will hate one another. Let's look at this. Let's look at the statement. If we look closer, we can see a progression of division. See, the enemy causing offense. 
He breaks up the power of agreement. Because we walking together. How can two walk together except there be agreement? And so now I'm offended, my God. And so now I didn't disconnect it. And now I'm no longer walking in sweet fellowship. I'm no longer, my God, walking in agreement with my significant other or with my brother or my sister, my God. And the enemy, my God, is progressively, my God, his ultimate goal is to make me tap out or make you tap out. It's just like, my God, when I started my addiction, my God, I started out smoking weed, and that wasn't enough. Then I started lacing in, my God, with cocaine. That wasn't enough. Then I went on the free base, and my addiction got progressive. Sin gets progressive. Offenses gets progressive. The more you feed it, anything I teach you, you feed, will live. Anything you don't feed, will die. Some of us sitting right now is feeding anger, feeding resentment, feeding strife, my God. Right now, and it's getting stronger and stronger. I've taught my leadership, and I've taught the church. It started out as a snake in Genesis, but now it's a dragon in Revelation. Or that thing started out small, but now it's a dragon. Now you can't shake it, baby. Because you keep feeding it. You keep entertaining it. You keep thinking about it. You keep letting the enemy remind you because you're not using the word of God. You let the enemy keep bringing up something. The Bible says take every thought into obedience, into captivity, to the obedience of Christ. You got to bring every negative thought that goes against the word into obedience of Christ. So when the enemy bump on your mind, you got to uh, counteract, my God, with something other than, than flesh. When the enemy start bringing up stuff, pain, pain past hate, resentment, all you got to say, the devil is alive. I've been in nailed that to the cross. I've already dealt with that. You can't use that no more. I didn't shift. I didn't push on, baby. You don't get to use that no more. But when the enemy comes and start bombarding our thoughts, we sit there and entertain it. Jesus said, even if he don't bombard our mind, but we start listening to stuff, Jesus said, be careful what you listen to and how you listen. We lend our ear to stuff, my God. We just let the enemy just feed us. Some of y'all, my God, you call your sister, quit letting people call you to contaminate you. Quit letting people call you always complaining. After you do that, you got to do like the woman of God said, now what you going to do about it? You didn't complain for 35 minutes, now what you going to do about it? Are you going to release and give it to God? Or are you going to continue to blame and deflect responsibility? Because if you really trace it, you had something to do with it. Just like you said, they had something to do with it. I think. Mm. I'm speaking from experience. I know it's like to be betrayed. And I also know it's like to betray people, especially in my former life. It didn't matter. It was, it was me against the world, as far as I'm concerned. I had to get mine. So you was that. You was that. Yeah. Yes, Lord. So, my God, this spirit of offense is progressive. It started out, my God, oh, my God, as a snake. Now it's a dragon. Not because of it been eaten, you've been feeding it so it can't eat. It can't eat unless you feed it. It can't eat unless you feed it. Mm. Division, division. Listen, this division is an act or a process of dividing or separating a group or a relationship. If everybody off in her, and I'm going to be transparent because I know some people right off in her that got some offense with each other in her right now. There's some online, my God, that's watching, that know they're supposed to be here, but they didn't got offended, so they'd rather stay at home. And <laughs> she's trying to say they come to the house of the Lord. I told y'all, you, never let, you don't never give another man or woman that much power or authority in your life to make you stay away from God, quit read, quit praying, stay away from the house of the Lord. But my God, but see, you got to be willing to do something about the offense because remember, my God, even though people make mistakes, you and I have to have a choice to make. Either I'm going to accept the offense and be, fit, I mean, be offended or I'm going to say, you know what, I just learned something. I didn't ever look at it like that, but I'm going to repent and I'm going to release. I'm going to get it up off of me. Because the Bible says to those who know, watch me now, the word of God, not Juju, not Pastor Lawrence. The word of God said those who know to do right now and yet choose to do wrong to him, it is sin. And the Bible says the wages, my God, of sin. Wages, I mean you work for it. You're working for this death that's coming if you don't repent and turn from. You don't have nobody to blame because you work for it because you didn't release. You didn't give it to God. My God, the wages of sin produces death. That's spiritually ultimately, my God, eternal separation from God. We have some decisions to make all around the world. Mm. Division. Good relationships and friendships has been divided because of an offense. Mm -hmm. And offense also leads to betrayal, and betrayal leads to hatred. Mm, are you with me so far? Uh, 
can I help you when I say don't let the spirit mock you? God, I love you. You're better than ever. You're good and good and good. You're good and whatever. But you got hate. You got hate for your sister. You got hate for your brother. I can understand, my God, they bumped up to you and it kind of set you off a little bit, my God. You're a little uneasy, my God, but you got hate. Some of you, you got hatred for your own flesh and blood, your biological sisters and brothers. You got hate for your mamas. You some of you even hate your own kids. And you're talking about he's better than good and all of those saying all you're mocking your life. Can you how, how can we sit? How can we sit up in the house of the Lord and talk about I love God and I hate Christians? I'm talking about a hate that'll make you punch him in his mouth. That's hate. We feel like that in the church. In the church with people. Remember, I'm not just talking about her. Those that's looking online, I'm talking about your church, I'm talking about you too. Because, see, I know a lot of people don't have Wednesday night service, so they tune in to going over Christ. So I'm talking to them too. I'm not just pastoring you. I'm pastoring everybody that's looking in on us. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. But we sit in the house of the Lord, jumping and shouting, playing instruments, singing songs, but we hate. Our brothers and our sisters. And that's how the hatred started. From an offense. The title of the sermon is what? Don't take the bait. So when somebody, oh my God, you start off in good sweet communion with your sister and with your brother. All of a sudden your sister or your brother do something and now the sweet communion has been violated. That's bait. That's bait. The enemy I already know. I'm going to get Jamie on to do something. I'm going to get Scooter to do something. I'm going to get Vontaze to do something. I'm going to get Ray to do something. Trying to break the sweet communion. Yeah. Trying to cause division. A house divided cannot. Yeah. When two people walk together, that gives you strength. One could put a thousand demons to flight and two could put ten thousand. You are better together. And you can do accomplish more together. That's why Jesus said, well, we need to touch and agree. Oh, my God. Touch and agree. You got to have someone to touch with to agree. So, therefore, when there's been division, when there's been a breach in the relationship, the agreement is gone. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Who are you going to agree with now? The tree? The pew? Yeah. The enemy is after the power of agreement. And when the agreement, my God, and the breach in the relationship has been violated, has been broken, my, we become, we render ourselves as a body and as a people, corporately as well as individually, we render ourselves powerless. Are y'all with me so far? Hatred, 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 hatred. Our hate, our, our, our focus, my God, becomes, when we got hate, our focus becomes self-protection. At all costs. Alvin, give me some air, it's hot. At all costs. At all costs. I, it, it don't matter what the pastor said. It don't even matter what I read in my Bible. Right, I got right. to protect myself, yeah. my God, because I don't want to be, I'm tired of being hurt, hurt. I'm tired of being violated. Now, let me help you. Thank you. I just want to teach. I'm a, yeah. Did God ever tell you to get in that relationship? Did the spirit of God lead you to that relationship that continually hurts you? Did God tell you to join with that person, join with that man, join with that woman, my God, that continually hurts you? See what I'm trying to say? So now you mad at them, but God said, I've never told you to join with them. Yeah. So something that you thought was going to bless you turned out to curse you. It started out good in the beginning, my God, but it, never, it never was a divine, watch me, y'all, look at me. There never was a divine connection because it was flesh and it wasn't God. And so now you bitter and angry. Come on, think about this, y'all. We, we are bitter and angry at people and relationships has been destroyed, Sister Stephanie. My God, communion, accountability, agreement, and all the stuff I'm talking about, Star, has been destroyed, my God, because we have joined with people that God never told us at that time to join with. And so we met at them when we should be met at ourselves and said, God, I should have I sought your counsel before I did what I did. <laughs> Uh, when it popped up on my computer, I know I shouldn't have opened it up. Now he didn't hoodwink me with all them old Billy D. Williams sayings, and it, and it turned out, my God, uh, it, uh, he, he gave you a picture that made it look like him, but it wasn't even him. We fall in love with people that's 2,000, 3,000 miles away. With, 
We'll skip church because he said, I got to talk to you at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. My God, that's the only time I can talk to you. So we got people that have missed church to stay at home and talk to somebody that's fake. And then we got the nerve to talk about he betrayed me. She betrayed me. That was never real from the start. It's called self-deception. Somebody give God a hand. I hope they're communicating over online. Uh, April, communicate back with them, Jenna up there. Yeah, I'm talking about I know it to be true, y'all. People have missed the house of the Lord to stay home because in different countries they got to talk at a certain time. And so now I know it to be true. Y'all know this stuff they do with social media. People that fell in love with fake gods. Fake people. You could be anything. On, on, I teach y'all that. I don't just be up there talking. I be led, church. I'm trying to protect you. And so therefore now we wounded. Now we got in the we now we got the mindset, I gotta protect myself at all costs. I ain't let nobody penetrate. I ain't let nobody get in. We won't even let the spirit of God get in. But we're in church, but we won't let God get in. That's why we can be in the house of the Lord, my God, every Sunday and every Wednesday and leave out here unchanged. Because it's only the presence of the Lord that changes you. If you don't never get yourself to the presence of the Lord, you can never be changed. Me preaching don't change you. The presence of the Lord is what change you. I give you information for you to apply. And the applying should take you to God, not away from God. So we got walls up. We got walls up. And the enemy want us to deflect responsibility and say it's somebody else's fault. When, like I told you, did you ever consult God before you got involved with that situation? What you expect to get? Flesh produces death. Spirit produces life and peace. When it's of God, it should be giving you a level of peace. It should be giving you a level of comfort. If you stretched out in a relationship, you always being beat little, talk crazy too, and so forth. If you are involved in something, my God, and it's not yielding good fruit in your life, you better back up. Even when it comes to investments, I always taught y'all counterfeit shows up before the real. Yeah. I always teach my baby that the counterfeit, the Billy D. William voice will show up before the real voice show up. Yeah. Mm, help the people, God. Our mindset becomes we must be protected and safe at all costs. See, we d develop a hard heart. The Bible says, harden not your heart to the voice of God. When we've been violated, when we're angry, when we got bitterness and hatred and stuff off of us, we put walls up to protect us. And the same walls that I taught y'all that we put up to protect us, to keep people out, has imprisoned you and I. And God can't even penetrate because God won't penetrate your will. Your will become hard. According to Hebrews chapter 3, 13, my God, my God, oh my God, my God, hatred, hard heartedness leads to sin. Sin leads to desensitizing. You can't hear God's voice when you're full of sin. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, I think it is, my God, we become desensitized. Our hearts become hard. Don't you know when our hearts is hard? Talking about this, not your heart, my God, but your mind. You can't hear the voice of God. You can't hear the voice of God. That's why we can do things, my God, my God, and it don't even bother us. We can, we can talk to people any kind of way, it won't even bother us. Or we can go, uh, we can let the flow come in and out and it don't even bother us. Uh, we can go do a whole lot of stuff and it don't even bother us. Uh, our heart is hardened. And when your heart gets hardened, that's your mind, my God, you become insensitive. We become insensitive to the voice of God. So watch me, y'all. I'm trying to teach you. So go for, therefore, if we full of deceitfulness and hatred and anger and bitterness and stuff, my God, you know what? You read this, but it ain't penetrating. Because the Bible says in Romans 12 too, my God, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So therefore, if this is not penetrating you, even though you read it, and it's not penetrating you, it's because your heart is hard and your mind. Ask yourself, what is blocking me from getting revelation? The Bible says in James, my God, if you ask of God for wisdom, he will freely give it to you. If you're asking God for the right motive, with the right method, God is bound by his constitution to give you wisdom. So why are you not understanding? Why are you not getting revelation? Why are you so frustrated? That's why you don't read. You got to ask yourself, my God, is it sin blocking me from getting an understanding? Is it deceitfulness? Is it witchcraft? Is it anger? Is it hatred? Is it bitterness? Is it unforgiveness? The Bible says all this stuff, my God, makes you insensitive to the voice of God. This is the voice of God. Thank 
Ooh, teach Holy Ghost. Ah, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. Look at your name and say, don't take the bait. Mm, mm, mm. Our minds just become, my God, we must, be, we must protect ourselves at all costs. This makes us incapable. I mean, this makes us capable of, a, of betrayal. Anytime we have our minds set on self-protection, and to be safe at all costs, we will betray a person in a minute. You know why we tell ourselves? Watch this. Anytime we got, my God, ooh, my God, the walls are, mm, uh, the self-protection walls. Yeah. I got to protect myself at all costs. I will betray you because, you know, in, in this right here, I can't let you hurt me. Yes. I can't let you get in. Yeah. So it's better you than me. See, this is the fleshly mindset we tell ourselves. And we justify when Jesus said you must forgive. Help us, God. Release the body. Release the body. When we betray, we seek our own protection. It's about me. God knows my heart. I'm doing what's best for me. You don't understand my story. You wasn't there. You don't know what's in my alabaster box. We come with all these excuses to justify being offended. You better than good. Man. You better than good. I mean, God sees all that. Notice the words that God been speaking in the atmosphere. Listen. The words that God has been speaking about the last three, four Sundays. Method and motive. Yes. Yes. Climitia, method and motive. Yep. That's what God looks at when he looks down from heaven. Your method and your motive. Why are you doing what you're doing? And with method, meaning how you're doing it. See, that matters too. It's not just that, you, that, 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 that your motive is right. Is your method right? Method. Motive ain't right, though. Come on, y'all. Come on. Stay with me. Online, stay with me. Method. This is in the corner world, in the church world, this is praising. That ain't praising. External movement is not praise. Even external clapping is not praise. Praise is intimacy. Worship is intimacy. Real worship will make you start out like this. And then you end up like this. Because see, now your praise that went from external, worship is internal, intimacy. And while you're standing up here external, my God, and God take you, my God, to worship, my God, then you say, okay, God, search me. Okay, I got to let Francetta go. I got to let Christian go. I got to let Vontaze go. I got to forgive. I got to let her go. Forgive my second wife. Forgive my fourth wife. Forgive my 18th husband. All of those. You see, God started cleaning you up from the inside out. Y'all yeah. listen to me. I'm not trying. Yeah. God will start cleaning you up and worship yeah. woman of God from yeah. the inside out. Right. Worship cleans you. Not only does it clean you up, it connects you with the heaven. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, Lord, teach with substance. Good flow. This flow. Good flow. Good flow. We betray. We betray. We seek our own protection, our benefit at the expense of someone else. Usually someone with a relationship we are in. We betray. We are seek to protect ourselves at the expense of somebody else. It's my husband's fault. It's the white man's fault. That police officer shouldn't have got behind me. He targeted me because he racist. But now they can get behind you and tell if you got insurance or even if you got warrants. So you're driving around with no driving license, spend your driving license. Police got behind you, run your tag. So they trying to say, you are not in compliance. Let me take it off. You are not in Romans 13, obeying the laws of the land. And so now you're angry and bitter, my God, because the police got behind you and pulled you over because he was a white man. Now he's racist. The yeah. devil is a lie. Christians. And you got to go on home for Christ shirt on, driving around with suspended license. And no insurance. But you got on J's, you got on polo, you get your hair done, you get your nails done. You know what I'm saying? You out of order. You out of order. That goes to method and that goes to motive. I know what I'm doing. You out of order. That's hypocrisy at the highest level. And when somebody call you out on it, all of a sudden now you're offended because you felt like they judged you. No, they did. They judged your nasty fruit. See, Pastor Paul said it's not my it's not my right. To judge those outside of the faith. People that don't profess to be saved. Paul said it's not my right. 
to judge them. Judge the way you and I think about it is not the judge that Paul is talking about. If I am a believer and I am in sin, I am out of order when it comes to lining myself up with the Constitution. Paul said as a believer and as a brother to you, a brother to me, horizontal accountability, but first horizontal accountability vertical, then horizontal her. And if you are out of order, you have a right as a born again believer with the right method and the right motive to say, look, I need to holler at you. You're out of order. You're out of order. You can't judge me. See, you just took the scripture completely out of context. If you are a sister and if you are a brother and you are doing something that's out of order and the woman or man of God come to you with the right method and the right motive and godly love, godly capacity, and they check in that flesh, my God, and you get mad, that's on you. It ain't on them. And we've had people leave the church because they were out of order in the sanctuary and somebody came to them with the right method and the right motive and now they're not here because they was already wounded when they came to the church. That's Bible. It's Bible. You have a right to say something to your brother and sister with the right method and the right motive. And if you think, my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. And if your heart ain't right, because you was already feeling some kind of way about him or her, get your butt over and sit down. Leave him alone because you ain't qualified. You don't have the authority. My God, to go say nothing to her because your motive and your method ain't right. See, God looks at that. You looking for an opportunity to get back at them, my God, but your motive ain't right. We're cleaning the body. And all those that's looking. Somebody give God a hand. Is this helping anybody so far? Come on, y'all talk to me. Is we helping anybody so far? Okay. Can I help you understand something? Let me help some of you ladies. You men already know what it is. I ain't apologizing to you for nothing. But let me help some of you women. When you got somebody that has earned a right, listen to me now. Oh man, when you got somebody that has earned the right, ladies, when I say earned the right method and right motive and their track record, meaning lifestyle, has been found faithful and she come to you about something that you know that, she, that you're doing, don't get offended. When they have earned the right, when their track record shows that they qualified up under proper authority, right method, right motive, my God, and they coming to you to point out something, I help you with something. If they coming to help you, why are you going to get offended? Right. If they tell you the shirt you got on is too low, why are you going to get offended? Right. If you're close, because you won't be sitting up here with no shirt. No, no, I promise you that right there. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. See, this is the type of stuff that the enemy will use to make people leave the church because a woman is coming to cover you up to protect you and you're offended. Yeah. Why she embarrassed me like that? Why you embarrass yourself by coming at the house like that? The Spirit of God, I'm telling y'all what I'm doing. The Spirit of God is giving me life application. I'm not trying to preach, the, I'm not trying to be seminary, y'all. I'm trying to make it personal. Because remember, pride will tell yourself that I'm okay. Pride will put the walls up and say self protect you at all costs. Yeah. When you're wrong. Yeah. When we wrong. Yeah. People see things as they are. Yeah. Not as they are. Right. So if I'm wounded, scarred, broken, I'm going to see things as I am. Yeah. The Bible says to the pure, they see things as pure. To the defiled, the offended, oh. when you translate that out, study it out, to the offended, they see things as defiled. You see things as you are. So if you wounded, offended, in hatred, in resentment, in bitterness, in anger, in deceitfulness, in sin, you see it. You can criticize everything because you defile. Yes, That's why right, you got to be careful who you join with. That's why right, you got to be led by the Spirit. That's why the Word of God says Jesus, God in the flesh, said wheat and terror go together. It's wheat and terror in here. Sooner or later, my God, the wheat going to come to the surface. And so with a tower. Usually they show themselves real early. I thank God. I was giving God the glory the other day about one that I was almost finna pull in, but she showed herself. And I said, Thank you, Lord. 
That's just real talk, baby. I pray God showed me everything sitting around up off of her. See, I pray a bold prayer. Oh my God, and when he showed it to me, I, I, okay, thank you. And I tell you, I quit asking God for stuff you ain't ready for. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Intentional. I'm not trying to preach above your head. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm trying to help you. I'm not trying to hurt you. God is trying to set you free. Let's go a little deeper. Thank you, Lord. To betray someone is ultimately abandonment, a covenant. If we started out in covenant, lead peoples and radiance peoples. I told y'all these are not just symbols, they are statements. So when I abandon this, I'm not trying to make nobody feel bad, so hear your pastor's heart for those I was talking about they know my heart. They really don't. They don't. I'm being as transparent as they get, baby. That's why all y'all always talk about, Pastor, I love your transparency. Y'all tell me online, y'all see me in the gym, y'all see me everywhere, Pastor, your transparency. Well, I'm being transparent. This right here. Some of you abandoned this and you weren't supposed to. Right. I'm going to let that sit right there. You know your story and you know what was going on. But don't justify it. Don't justify it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't justify it. Do not justify breaking covenant because you were trying to please the flesh. Method and motive. He sees. I can't judge it. He will. So when you betray someone, you ultimately abandon the abandonment of covenant. When betrayal happens, the relationship cannot, watch this, because I got to be careful now. The relationship cannot be restored when you abandon, uh, you betray. Betrayal happens. The relationship cannot be restored unless genuine repentance take place. Let me help some of y'all understand what repentance is. So if I am, it's real simple. It's not complex. So if I am, well, I got to start this way, to the left. <laughs> if I'm going this way, this is the wrong way, Mama Donna. Everything that I'm looking in my, what my natural eyes shows me and tells me and even feels like it's wrong. When I recognize that it's wrong, I have an obligation to my God first and then to myself. And when I repent, that means I turn from going left. Yeah. And then I start going the right way. So if I have betrayed you, if I have abandoned you, if I've hurt you, if I've offended you, if I had did whatever, then I come to you with genuine repentance. That means turn from. You don't get to keep, continue to do what you do. Yeah. Even though he says forgive you seven times seven, right. that wasn't for the same sin though. Right. That's why I said if he come back, forgive him. It wasn't for the same thing. Study to show yourself a prove. You don't get to mishandle me. You should tell yourself, you don't get to mishandle me. So repentance is that I was going the wrong way. That's the, that's the simplest way, a form I can uh, teach you. And now I'm, now I'm making a decision to go the right way. Yeah. I was going the wrong way once upon a time before April 30th of 1995. And since then, I've been going the right way. So my God, even though we're going to give an altar call and many of us is going to come, if not the whole church, because the whole church need to come. My God, when you come, if you're not going to repent and go the opposite direction, then you shouldn't come. Because your motive and your method is wrong. The motive, my God, and your method has to be right for true repentance to take place. And, and restoration cannot happen when betrayal has taken place if the person does not repent. That means stop doing what they're doing to, hurt, to, to betray you, to hurt you. Even in our relationships now, husband and wives, when the wives and husbands or whatever feel betrayed, Unless there's been change, transformation, because change, write this down, is external. Many of y'all know this, but transformation is internal. And so if you're in a relationship, husband and wife, and there's been a level of betrayal, betrayal is not that I committed adultery, like lying. See what I'm trying to say? Lying to each other. I was guilty of that. I repented. What the pastor? Uh, how can I believe you now? I can never follow you. You said you told a lie. <laughs> he who was out seeing, let them cast the first stone. 
I hope y'all typing in them up there, Jana. Yeah. See, sometimes you have to be, as I teach the leaders, you have to be vulnerable That's right. to help other people get free. Yeah. That means you got to tell on yourself yeah. to help somebody else get free. When you keep it on a dollar with the people, the people yeah. will keep it on a dollar with you. That's why so many pastors pastor in fear and yeah. bondage. They don't have the freedom. You know how many pastors that came and said at 34, 34, and y'all witnessed this and said, I wish I had the freedom with my people that you have. Right. I've had pastors tell me that. Yeah. I wish I had the freedom with my people like you got with your people. Mm -hmm. That means they bound Shemaine in a pulpit. Yeah. There's only certain things that they can say because if not, the people are going to make an exit. Yeah. I thank God for the freedom to obey God over you. Mm -hmm. I'm finna finish this last one, I'm done. So, betrayal leads to hatred with serious consequences. I need one person to tell me betrayal, hatred, what consequence could come from that, anybody? From betrayal to hatred. Anybody want to say something? Yes, ma'am. Cheating. Murder. There you go. Murder. Physical murder, but also murder of purpose, murder of assignment. Not giving people the affection they need. How about, how about murder of your relationship? I talk to men. Some of us is very conditional with God. We honor God when we choose to. We honor God with our giving when we want to. Not say choose to, want to. We tell ourselves we tithe us because we pay tithes one check, but we don't the next check. So pastor that said he had lied before, so what did you just do? That's everybody in here. Everybody. As I look at certain people, I see. I'm required. I get reports. You don't do what you're supposed to do. And so the Bible says, Pastor, Father, know those that labor among, among you. you. Yes, sir. Differentiate who's who That's right. and what's what in the ministry. How you doing? Put them in the category. Washing me with their mouth, but their loyalty is far from me. Right. Pastor, I love you. Yeah. It's conditional when I want to. Yeah. I submit to you when I want to. Yeah. All that stuff comes because we're disloyal to God, so we can't be disloyal. To, so we, we, there's no way we can be loyal to another man That's when right. we're disloyal to God. Sure. Pastor, I love you when I want to. You my pastor when I want you to. I pay my tithes if I want to. I'm using natural situations, but this is how we are. We commit adultery on God. Read your Bible. Anytime we love the world and put the world before God, it's called adultery. Read James, New Testament. Read Isaiah and Jeremiah, Old Testament. You can't separate the two, baby. So when you disloyal your vertical, you'll be disloyal your horizontal. And you wonder why things are so tight. Wonder why the flow is not like it used to be. Wonder why the flow, canker worms, locusts, eating up stuff, stuff breaking down, always problems, ain't never got enough. Robbing Peter to pay Paul, ain't got no peace, take it off for money, don't have no peace, ain't got no joy. Peace is external, joy is internal. Oh my God, there's so much going on, it's being robbed of you because you're not right vertical. Even though he's more than everything, more than everything. I'm trying to help what belongs to me. Don't take the bait. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We get offended at God and we say, I ain't giving you what belongs to you. I ain't reading. I ain't praying. I ain't coming to church. We're doing that to God. It's people online right now. There's people in here right now. There's people all over the world right now. When we, when we, don't, when we feel like God has betrayed us, Ooh, we feel like God has not handled us right, or we feel like God has left us, forgotten us, dropped us, then we feel like we got to pay him back. Amen. Method and motive. 
Don't take the bait. As I close this point, the Bible states clearly, anyone who hates their brother is a murderer. The woman of God says after betrayal, the consequence is murder. And she spoke that firm. And I can imagine, let me good use me because I don't know, murderous thoughts, murderous, Pastor Jeff say, intent. It's people right now, if you had an opportunity to get away with it, you'll kill them. And they come back and say, more than anything, we're killing people, not with the gun. Withholding love, withholding respect, withholding honor. Killing them with your words. Lying on your brothers and sisters. If we just obey by the Ten Commandments, love thy neighbor. If I love my neighbor, I won't cover it what she got or cover it what he got. That's I'm not right. going to lie. I'm not going to blaspheme. I'm not going to, come on. My, I'm not going to have no other gods before him. Thou shalt now, the first one, thou shalt have no other God. That means, my God, I'm going to honor God with my 10% because I don't have no other gods before him. He is the true and living God. So all this other stuff that I'm trying to keep God's money back so I can buy some shoes, buy some polo, buy some joy, go to Vegas and do that stuff. See, them as gods. Clean the church. Wow. We're going to be better. We're going to stand before God at 205 South Sheridan. Her job well done. Yeah. Our good and faithful servant. Yeah. And so murder you, is murderous intent. I could kill her. I could kill him. Mm -hmm. Murdering assassinating the integrity of the church that you go to with people who don't even go to the church. Yeah. If you're online talking about your church that you attend to people who don't even go to your church. And so now you have allowed them yeah. to right. formulate a perception yeah. about your church right. and they don't even go to your church. Yeah. They're looking at your sisters, they're looking at your brothers, my God. Who, my God, with murderous intent because you sold it. And the scripture said, my God, it's best that you tie a millstone around your neck. Yeah and drunk into the ocean and kill yourself first before yeah. God gonna knock you off. That's Bible. Yeah. It's best that you jump in the ocean and drown because when you stand before me, baby, I got something for you. That's what God is saying. I'm making, word, I'm making street turn. When you stand before me, I'm gonna crack you off. That's Bible. Yeah. I'm, just not, I'm just not doing seminary. It's best you put a meal stone. That's, right, That's a harness around your neck and jump in the ocean so it can take you down real quick like this. Then stand before me if you'll cause one of my little ones to stumble because you, you have murderous intent about the church, about Christians, about your sisters, about your brothers, talking about your leaders, talking about your pastors. That's why I teach the men, quit coming up off of her and never coming to the altar. Everybody got something to come to the altar for. You can never come in the presence of a holy God, oh my God, and, and feel like you ain't got nothing to come to the altar. Every person in the sound of my voice, every time you come to the house of the Lord, you should have an intent to be at the altar. And just because you come to the altar don't mean that you aren't sin. Sometimes you just say, God, clean me. God, if I thought something, if I said something, I might not even know about it. So just in case, I'm coming anyway. I had a good day today. I didn't. I, I watched my attitude today. I didn't cuss nobody out. I didn't look at uh, So I'm just coming anyway because I'm going to make sure that I'm clean. Creating me a clean heart. That's your mindset. Wash me with hyssop that I may be clean. Yes, Lord. Whatever you do, please, Lord. If you take your spirit away from me, I'm going to fall over and die. I'm going to set that right there. I'm not going to do my closing because I guess we got to come back with this. That's all point one. Before we move, I want us to sit still for a second. The Spirit of God just gave this to me because I want you liberated. Remember the Spirit of God said pride would not let you see your real condition. A lot of us got 
offensive that led to betrayal, abandonment, to malicious intent to murder, even our mamas and daddies and uncles and different people that has went on to glory and went on is no longer here, but we've been carrying offenses for so long. We just didn't know at the level that God talked tonight. Mamas has to be released. Yeah. One of the things that helped me, my mama raised seven boys, five boys and two girls, seven kids by herself. All of us had different daddies. When I came to the saving knowledge of God, and I look back over at my life, we had a good, decent life. We didn't have the best of everything. It was days, we went seven days at times. We just had a number of popcorn. We had nothing to eat. My mama did the best she can. I told y'all many days she left when we was younger. I was in third grade. She said, I left. I thought about never coming back. My brother Tony and Monty was already out doing their thing, and John was in school. And I mean, John was uh, older and was just bucking me. And then my sister Pookie then went on to glory, and then my baby sister Nicole, my God. And my mama told us. She said it to me, I was in the bed, where I should get up in the bed with my mama and lay down with her a lot. And she said, as many days she left, and she thought about never coming back. I told some of y'all this before. She said, because the strain, meaning the responsibility of raising seven kids, was too much. And all of us had different fathers and none of them. None of them. Key word, seven different fathers. Let you know, mama used to get us a round away girl. See what I'm trying to say? But my mama, y'all know, paid off two drug debts that kept me alive. My mama always made sure I had what I needed when I was incarcerated. My mama, I'm going through this, I'm finna liberate you, God is. She did the best she could with her and my grandma, Callie West, with seven kids with absolutely no help. And the thought of not ever coming back, but the love yeah. for her babies, all seven of them. She couldn't abandon us because the love wouldn't let her. And it wasn't in God's will. That's why even though many are the plans of a man's heart, no gender, but it's the Lord's will. That's why you got to know the word of God, baby, that will prevail. And so when I got saved and, and growed up a little bit, come on, somebody, I began to look at mama and think back. She did the best she could. So it's a lot of things I didn't have. It's a lot of things she didn't do but she did the best of what she could do. So I had to get to the point where I had to give mama a pass. Why am I saying it? Because God showed me what I'm teaching y'all, scripture-wise, ministers of these, in the scriptures, way back in that prison cell. I have no, I have no choice but to forgive her because she did the best that she could. And I thank God for Irene Starks. She was truly, truly a blessing. Strong. Matter of fact, Mama Georgia, which is Janice's mama, and she'll tell you, <laughs> Mama, Mama Georgia, I always, she always admired. She always tell me, I admired your mama. Mama was a strong woman. Just like some of you. Why am I telling you this? Because some of you need to really understand that your mama may have done the best that she could. And if she didn't have a good role model, she only did what she thought she was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, my God. So why don't you release her? For some of you, your mama had walked out on you and your grandma took you in and you got an offense with her. She could have left you. Why don't you release her? Because she didn't have to take you in. Well, it would have been better if she did take me in. Pastor, the way she treated me, how she done me, she made favoritism with her kids. So, okay, I get all that. See, we always talk ourselves out of obedience to God's voice. We can come up with a thousand ways and reasons why we don't need to do what God tells us to do in his word. That ain't nothing but your flesh. Take every thought into captivity to the obedience of God's word. Quit talking yourself out of it. Your uncle took you in. Yeah, he, he, he touched you. I'm not going to be insensitive. Have you ever asked him, was he molested? Have you ever asked your daddy, daddy, if those that are still alive, 
Can I ask you something? I'm grown now. I need to talk to you. We finna man up up in here, homie. Was you ever touched? Why you say that, son? Because you touched me. So you had to get that from somewhere. Well, no, I wasn't touched. What made you touch me then? If you weren't touched, why you touch me? Curiosity. Okay. You telling the truth? Yeah, I'm telling the truth. Okay. You got to do something with that. Can you handle and are you ready yeah. for the truth? When you go to asking questions, are you ready for the truth? Do you have the disposition to handle the truth? Because you have to confront the truth to get free That's from right. the bait of Satan. And this word called offense is killing you internally. It's killing your assignment, killing your joy, killing your relationships. Doors is closed. Remember I told you, attitude is just nasty because you got bitter roots. And remember, many opportunities, I taught y'all that Sunday has been lost because of attitudes. You can't even love right because you got so much pain and bitterness that you won't release. How can you love someone when you don't even love your own self? Well, I do love me. No, you don't. Because if you're carrying defenses, offenses, and you got hatred, malicious intent to murder, and you can't stand, you don't want nobody to touch you, nobody to be around. You, how can you say you love yourself when you bound up like that? Offenses lead to captivity. Are we in prison to the spirit of offense that the enemy meant to destroy you? The scripture said offenses must come. But woe to the one that caused the temptation. Jesus let the body of Christ know this stuff going to happen. What you going to do with it, though? He's holding you and I accountable, Christians, for what we do with offenses. Let's get it. The altar's open. Cornell, do me a favor and give me something soft. I want all of us to, we're going we gonna, to we gonna, we gonna let him play from the, 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 the system up there, uh, 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 Christian. Come on, let's pray, y'all. Give me something. Give me something, Cornell, as you get ready. I know I caught you off guard. It troubles me. Let me be careful. Please don't let the enemy rob you. That you could just walk up out of a service like this with no intent to come to the Lord. Come on, let's find a place. Let's find a place. If you need to come on top of this altar up here, get up here with me. You ain't got to be right there. Come on up here. Let's everybody get before God as the man of God said something.